Hey everybody, Dutch Sense here. It's 4.47 a.m. Central Time on the 16th of February 2023, and we just had a 5.0 range earthquake get reported in here in Texas, and uh, USGS has now downgraded it to a 4.5, but I'd like to at least get this open. This is a semi-large earthquake. We'll see if they go up or down on the magnitude on this, but they came in at 5, so it's the first 5 in several months. Let's go pull the coordinates and get the info from the USGS. So, display capture on, and info, is this from the US? Oh no, it's the EMSC, they now have it at 4.7. They brought it in at 5. Took it down to 4.5. Now it's back up at 4.7. Say go over to the USGS site to see more information. So let's see what's going on there. Okay, USGS does have the quake. They have it at 4.5. Okay, well, that magnitude is going to go up or down over the next few hours as it is revised. I'd like to look at the local magnitude stations, just see what it's showing up local. It's showing up anywhere in that 4.7 range, I'd say. they got topping out at 4.9, low end 4.3, halfway between the two. That I mean, that takes us to 4.7. So it's near 5.0. This is not the only 5 we need to talk about. But again, we're going to get the coordinates on this, put it in, see what's on Google Earth see how close our nearest well is our oil and gas wells down here in texas are numerous so i want to see if we're next to any of them yeah okay i mean in this case we are literally right on top of a series of disposal wells where they'll take the fresh water in these ponds they collect like rainwater and so forth mix it with chemical put it down into the ground and break apart the shale to release oil and gas and they collect that and then take it off and that's uh, the process of fracking and wastewater disposal and it looks like there's a fair amount of uh, different wells around here all these little square pads in the ground like this are the different oil and gas wells okay so a new five let's just call it a five 4.9 five 4.7 striking on the edge of a fairly large pumping operation down here in central texas now there's something else going on down here in texas that we can talk about in a few minutes that's the storms that are going on down in texas right over the same area but check it out a bunch of other earthquakes struck that we absolutely must talk about haiti was struck check it off the list warned them for up to 5.9 5.5 struck italy was hit or i'm sorry croatia north adriatic Warn them for up to 5.9, 5.3 to 5.5 hit. Romania was struck. Warn them for 5.9, 5.6 hit. So, that's three locations there. Again, check it out. Romania struck. Right up here at the Adriatic just struck. And over here at Texas struck. As well as Haiti struck. So those are four locations we warned. And those are all within the magnitude of the expected magnitude. Speaking of expected magnitudes, down here in New Zealand, we got within the magnitude on the low end, 6.1 to the north of the island, and then a 6.1 struck down at Cook Strait. They took it down to 5.7. It is what it is. It came in at 6.1, but you can see there's a big disturbance going on here, going from all the way over at New Caledonia, back down and around and up into Fiji, then back down all the way into New Zealand proper, where apparently it was a pretty hefty shake that came in down there. Um, I don't know if Animatronic is still down there. I don't know if he felt that. That's the guy who does my animations for me. But he's down there in Wellington. Now, speaking of 6.1s, another 6.1 struck. This one's over here at Philippines, right on the plate boundary at the center bend point between our two arrows take you over and show you the USGS plate boundary map so you can see it here over here in the West Pacific. So going out and across up into the Philippines, 6.1 there. We had a deep 6.1 north of New Zealand, another 6.1 
down here at Cook Strait that they downgraded to 5.7, whatever, three 6.1s going across the plate. That's a fair amount of movement for a day's time. That happened since yesterday, 6.1, 6.1, and 6.1, and now 48 hours, I'm sorry, that last two days, that's all happened. This here, going down to the two X's, is our antipode for Turkey. Antipode is just a fancy word for the other side of. So we're talking about on the other side of the planet is where Turkey is, and we were watching for a disturbance to come out within 30 degrees of the opposite side of the planet, and this is according to the professionals on antipode earthquakes to take place. And I would call this a fair amount of movement. It's not the exact same sized movement as what was going on over in Turkey. It's within a magnitude of it, but it's spread out across the whole plate boundary. Go back over here and show it to you on the USGS plate boundary map. Here's the red line plate boundary map. Whole thing moving from, like I said, New Caledonia all the way down here to the Cook Strait in New Zealand. That's 1,000, 2,000, 3 or 4,000 linear miles around the outside edge of the plate, all moving in a day to two days' time. This is 48 hours worth of earthquakes we're looking at now. Going out and across over into Asia, like bookends on both sides, two 4.3s in the middle of 5.1, out in front of it a 4.2 to 4.3 as well. I'm going to look right here for a new break to take place. That's the combined total of everything all around it. Should put us up to about the same size that's striking around the rest of the planet. A new 5.5 incoming here up here into the Taklamakan Desert going into India. As we go back over to Europe, like I said, Italy was struck back across all the way over to Haiti. Haiti was struck. They've now downgraded the earthquake in Texas. Man, uh, how low can you go? Is this a game of the limbo? I mean, are we going to lower the bar a little bit more or raise it, I guess? I, no, we're going to lower the bar. How low can we go? 3.9, baby. Take it down to 3.9. Let's roll the dice. Go here to Vegas. <sighs> anyway, all right. So yeah, it's a pumping operation. You know, again, it started out at a 5. So we start getting down to a 3.9, I'm going to just tell you. I, I bet you there's a few million dollars that transfers accounts every time a magnitude goes down like that next to a pumping operation, right? Maybe I shouldn't bet on that. I'll just throw that out there that I just think that that could be possible. They call that a scientific downgrade or something, right? I, <laughs> okay, science, right? Science spelled with a dollar sign instead of an S. Okay, anyway, back over to the <laughs> back over <laughs> across over into the Central Pacific. Hawaii was struck last night. New 5, 4.7 coming in right along the coast of Bahala. That fulfills the forecast for Hawaii. If you were keeping track of what we warned Hawaii for, we were looking for up to 5.0 to return back along the coast of Bahala. The reason I was looking for a 5 in Hawaii, just trace the Hawaiian island chain back to the north, goes back up here, and what were we dealing with? 4.9, 4.7, so forth, about the same size. Also told you to watch over to the east, spreading out over across into Mexico, into the Gulf of California. And we got yesterday a 4.5, then a spread of fours today going across Central America. And like I said, over to the east, new 5.5, striking next to Haiti. And let me show you how that flowed. A bunch of fours broke out along the coast of Central America, went over to the east, new 5.5. That all happened in the last day. And the only thing missing now is a 4.9 in Southern California. I missed it by a magnitude. I think that may be it. But 3.9, or what was it, 3.3? I, The downgrades I don't keep track of. I should, but not as much as I should. Um, there's no earthquake there now of any significant size. That's the only spot I'm waiting for that I think all the others have moved is there there may be one more the you know fourth spot in Europe that we were watching for right here it got a 4.9 I was looking for a 5.9 I was a magnitude off right here at the Greece Bulgaria border but the others came in I mean there they are so all three locations got hit it just looks like I was a magnitude under on the flow in the wave in wasn't as big as I thought and then as it goes around the bends of the plate Boom and boom. Again, if I'm looking for 5.9 and a 5.3 comes in, that's the quake. It's down to the spot. 
we warn the Adriatic Sea right here, east of Italy, central, eastern, north Italy, right through here. Let me take you back to the USGS plate boundary map. Here's Italy, and we warn right here. And the earthquake struck right here, just north at Croatia. Okay, and the spot on Romania is spot on, down to like almost a mile. We warned right here at the first bend of the plate coming up into Romania that goes around and makes an S-shaped bend. And we warned them for up to 5.9. 5.6 and a 5 came in. Add them together, it equals 5.7 to 5.8. So we're right on on that. Uh, back down to Turkey. Let's get into Turkey really quick. Turkey still continues to move. The magnitudes now are at the 4.0 range. However, I think there's a new push coming in. It's going to take it up to 5.9 to 6. I think that's most likely what's going to be happening here. We won't consider it an aftershock if it strikes in a different spot than all of these others current here on the map. And I would look over on the western side. Probably a new six, guys. There's a new flow incoming. You see it right here. It's pointing like an arrow over to Iran. Why does Iran matter? Well, USGS map barely shows it, but like an arrow pointing over to Iran, 5.0's worth of energy, wave incoming. And look where Iran's plate boundary goes. Well, it goes up and dead ends into Turkey, where that huge fracture has taken place. And they're saying it's the Anatolian Fault. Well, might have to call it the Anatolian Plate Boundary because it's connecting all the way across. So if we have a new push coming in, it's going to go into Turkey. And if a new push comes in, we're going to take the next step up. And how big are we now? We're at 4.9. So that means we're going to go up to 5.9. And if we're going to go up to 5.9, I'm issuing a warning for a 6. Because even if the USGS does their crazy downgrades, takes it down, whatever, uh, you'll hear about it. It'll be like, oh, a new, they'll call it a significant aftershock because they won't want to admit it's a new arriving wave that's causing the currently broken area to re-flare back up. You, I mean, an aftershock would mean that it's a result of the first earthquake, but really it's being pumped back up with new energy coming in from over to the east okay and anything above five point something in turkey is just i mean right now like i said we're at 4.8 to 4.9 i think we're going to take the next step up the arrow of earthquakes is pointing in the direction of the plate boundary that we should also see just as a you know a little thing you can keep watch for you keep watch for new earthquake activity to be reported across iran as this quote-unquote wave is coming across. The middle point here should break with a new earthquake as well in Iran. And that too should be somewhere in that upper five level. The last 5.9 in Iran caused some serious damage. That was right before Turkey, by the way. There was a 5.9 to 6 that struck here in Iran, down here, I think, or somewhere right over here. And then the next week, this broke. So the whole area has been in flux for a while. Now it's over the wave is spreading out over to the west. A new 4 struck out at the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, along with the 4.6 up at Iceland. But let's just go back to it. Sorry, my microphone almost just fell over there. Go back over here across over the United States. They really downgraded the heck out of that one from a 5 down to a 4.3. That's what got me to get on here in the first place. But I really should have gotten on to do an update on these because those are two significant size quakes that fulfills the spread going across Europe that's proof that the flow went out of Turkey and it's kind of obvious the flow did go out of Turkey somewhat we went down in magnitudes so we're t starting to taper off as the wave goes out but then a new wave comes in and if it's still moving it flares back up all right, so we're getting down to the last day. Uh, tomorrow is the last day of the watch for Turkey to be on watch for a significant large earthquake. When I said significant six days ago, I meant it. So it could be up to 7.0. But I said we would watch for that as long as we did not see earthquakes over the west. So we would keep watching in Turkey until we see earthquakes go across Central Europe and out across Europe. So as like a wave escaping the tank that we would wait for that to happen. And if that doesn't happen, if the wave doesn't go out to Italy and Romania, that we would see a new seven 
back down in Turkey. Well, now the wave's gone out to Italy and Romania. So I would say, knock on wood, whatever you want to call it, the chances or likelihood of a new seven are unlikely now. And that the highest we would go would be a new six that would come in. And it would be over on the left-hand side of this whole break, or central Turkey would be another way to put it. See where the green earthquake is? All the way over here across, somewhere out here. Okay. So right out here, I would watch for that new 5.9 to 6 to break. Uh, last time I issued a warning for the 5.9 to 6, the 7 hit. Just as a point of reference. So last time I warned for a 6, the big one hit. I was way off on the magnitude. Uh, anyway, all right, back to it. So Texas moving. I said I wanted to show you the storms, but I was going to wait till the end of the update. Wait till you see this. You guys ready? A radar anomaly happened over here, just north of Texas, north of the earthquake. And you see the big storms that we're having here going across the whole country. So, well, not the whole country. Half the country, big storms going through. We just had a bunch of thunder and lightning here. There was no real forecast for any kind of rain tonight. I checked, maybe a 20% chance of rain. Anyway, we got some strong winds and thunderstorms that blew through tonight. But I'd like to show you what happened on the radar earlier today over Oklahoma and North Texas and Kansas. So let's just go back. We're going to look at the mosaic radar first. But I think even the untrained eye will be able to see in about two seconds here what's going on. Just wait. Okay there, all right. Sorry, I had to unplug my microphone really quick, but maybe I should zoom it in a little. Maybe that'll help you see. Let's go zoom in on the Oklahoma, Kansas, Texas area. Now what you're going to see are storms flare up, of course, but what I'd want you to do is pay attention to what's going through the storms. Watch this. There we go. All right, this is where we flared up into major tornadic activity. We've got multiple tornadoes breaking out across this area, going up into South Missouri. Tornado warnings took place right around this time. Okay, but what I want to draw your attention to is the rotating radar and what's going on here isn't normally seen by the public. And what they do is they'll remove these off the feed so that the general public does not see this. They call this quality control to get the different non-weather related signals and reflections off the radar. So you can't see this oh, if you go check your local radar. They remove this. Okay, now what's causing these? Well, we could just trace this beam down here back to its transmitter all the way over at Little Rock. What they're doing with the transmitter at Little Rock is they're actually using a high power microwave pulsed in a very tight beam of high power microwaves that goes up at an angle. So this is coming from ground level. You actually have to imagine this going up like a cone into the sky. And they're looking up through the center of the storm and trying to see what's going on inside the storm, the high power microwave. But it's leaving that signal. Now, that's the beam going through all the way out to the edge of very far out, way beyond what they show the public that the radar goes to. They'll show you 50 and 100 nautical miles around the radar and tell you that's how far it can see. That's a load of crap. It can actually see out 500 miles over to the west and beyond all the way out to the next radar station over to uh, central Oklahoma. And they can even use one beam to cross with the other. Why would you want to cross one beam with the other? Well, they will tell you it doesn't do anything. But if we listen to Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Bearden's lectures on the topic on where you cross the beams, you can get what they called action at a distance back in the 80s when developing the missile defense systems. And guess what was developed as part of the missile defense program? The WSR-88D, or well, at WSR-88 at the time, which is the weather surveillance radar, rolled out as part of the National Strategic Missile Defense Initiative, but paid for by the National Weather Service. And guess who maintains the radars? The military, the U.S. Army, and the U.S. Air Force both maintain the radars. U.S. Air Army goes to the civilian locations if they need anything fully replaced. Now, the real in interesting thing about this is where the beams cross, we get action at a distance, according to Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Bearden and Scaler. 
and scalar is just a complex word to describe where two two beams cross or an area. Uh, it's just an area, but they do scalar Higgs boson experiments crossing high power microwaves at CERN over in Switzerland using banks of klystrons, which are these things that zap up power into more power. They take basically a small amount of power and zap it up in a klystron in a tube. It's an actual gaseous tube, and it spits out more power. It's not over unity. It takes a fair amount of power to go into it, and it's a very complex, dangerous device. But anyway, the klystrons are set up in whole banks at CERN, and they use the klystrons to produce huge power microwave that then they shoot particles with. Well, they produce two microwave beams, not one. And they collide the beams inside of a magnetic chamber to contain the explosions of the colliding particles. Anyway, the collision area is called a scalar, and that's why it's called Scalar Higgs Boson Experiments at CERN, where the two beams cross. Ghostbusters, sort of, where you talk about the two beams crossing, don't cross the beams. Okay, particle collision, full particle reversal. As Egon tells you in the movie Ghostbusters. How ironic, right? How could he even know him? Now, looking at back at the that, uh, 1980s too, right? Okay. So the beams crossing. We have a beam here coming from Oklahoma, crossing with the beam here coming out of Little Rock, and they both meet right inside the storm. Now, if you go and look at the timing on the storm, you will see the storm starts to take a rotation where the two beams begin, and that's where the tornado warning was issued. Is it chance or coincidence? Maybe they are just looking at the storm. But when you start seeing a rotation on the radar and this signature in particular in the storms itself and that the storms take this shape and that the storms form in this spacing, you start to realize that the storms are being influenced by the radar themselves and it's not unintentional. It can't be at this point. The storms are forming in the shape of the, the actual, this for instance, right there. Now that just refreshed, just want people to be aware of that. So why am I taking the time to show you all of that? All of that happened over here just a few hours ago. Several of the stations beaming into the spot coming out of Texas. Now down in Texas, right down here, we get our new earthquake. 5.0 downgraded to 4.3, just beyond the view down here to the south. So I'm going to rewind it one more time. And we're just going to see what comes out of Texas again. There we go. So, coming out of Texas down to the south, well, first of all, we have a few things beaming into Texas. That's pretty interesting, isn't it? But right out of there, so coming out of Texas down to the south, meme here. Another down to the south. Now, this one is beaming to the, from the north all the way up in Kansas, across all of Oklahoma, and the beam's going up above north Texas. Trace it all the way back to the station here. That's how far the station really beams out. Same within North Texas again. Down to the south now, it looks like we got a station down here in Texas doing it. And then right about there, it looks like down. Wow. This is now getting to just maybe a couple of hours before the earthquake down in Texas. I'd like to go down and just quickly look at the state of Texas as a whole and just see if there's anything else showing up, aside from a big line of storms, of course. Wow, okay. You see them beaming in from the north. That's supposedly just being absorbed by the Earth's electromagnetic field as it dissipates out into the atmosphere. You know, captured by the Earth's magnetic field. You know what happens when that happens? Goes down to ground. Okay, so, looks like they're hitting the storm right there. They're looking at it. This station over here in West Texas, beaming across to right here, looking into the storm. Then, or, but pre-storm, there is nothing there, right? No storm yet. They're looking into it, and right where they're zapping, boom, that's where it forms. Look at that. For, they zap it a few times first. Zap, 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 boom. Then it takes off, right? Okay, where did they zap? Right here. They zap it, it forms. Zapping first. Again, there's nothing there. It's This is over the course of hours. Look, they got it parked there. 
park, 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 and then just so happens that that's where the storm forms a couple hours later? Please, right? High power microwave targeted an area over for, for hours into a dust storm or whatever that is, a front coming across, and then boom, that's where it breaks out. You gotta be kidding me, right? That's not chance. But let's go compare to where the earthquake struck. Should be pretty easy to find. Earthquake struck right here. Let's get the coordinates from the USGS. Hermley, Texas. South by southeast of Lubbock. West by northwest of Abilene. Uh, do we have any kind of county lines or something that we could put on here? Street map? Roads will do it. Okay, the roads will do it because I can go over here and turn on, I think... Do we have roads on here? Okay, look. The earthquake is striking right up in here. It definitely is. The earthquake, it, it's within... It's within 50 miles. Guys, the earthquake is within 50 miles of it. Again, an earthquake right up here. Or 100 miles. That might be 100 miles. Still, it's so close. It is. It is so close. I, I'm glad I went to go compare. So the earthquake is striking right in here. The beam that formed that started this whole southern part of the storm here. Boom. Breaks off into a huge outbreak that goes across and over to the east where we are now. I mean, it could be chance. I'll say it. Could be chance. Chance. Yeah. Yeah, that's the ticket. It's chance, Dutch. It's just chance that they're beaming there all day and then a storm forms there first. And the earthquake striking next to it, too. Wonderful stuff. Anyway, I said I was going to wait till the end of the broadcast to show that to you because we get into how can a high-power microwave or any other kind of directed energy from radio waves induce earthquake activity. Well, there is a technical explanation that I'd g give you, but no uh, professional will agree, I don't think, except for maybe Lieutenant, Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Bearden, who's now dead, that there's a stripping of electrons that happens, and that Earth's magnetic field does absorb that free-floating radio wave that's alternating current, by the way, AC. AC floating through the air, and it gets captured by Earth's magnetic field as it dissipates out into the ether and it gets taken back down to ground and those free moving electrons through the air the radio wave and ac mother nature reconverts that to dc down into the plate it's called efficiency scaling it's a process that happens between radio waves and the earth's magnetic field it's how the earth's magnetic field absorbs radio waves they convert into dc power and go down to the core of the earth or well, down to ground which is the plate. And then you get earthquakes down below areas where you've stripped a bunch of electrons by scuffing your feet across the carpet of the atmosphere. The radio waves are scuffing their feet across the carpet of the atmosphere at that spot all day, which then induces cloud condensation nuclei up in the sky, the thing that precursor to rain. Normally dust would attract water molecules in the air. But that can also happen when you strip electrons ionization up in the sky. Already proved. These things are already proved. Cl cloud condensation nuclei done by the American Meteorological Society in experiments down in Laredo, Texas, using straight-up electricity through wires spread out across a few couple acres and a big generator. Anyway, just giving you examples, guys. I just got on to do this update for just, I can't sleep. So, this update is just solely because I'm having a bad week on all kinds of stuff. It just hasn't been good. Thank you guys for your well wishes, for your prayers, and for my, you know, for your prayers for my family. If you don't know what happened, somebody we love dearly passed suddenly, unexpectedly, and it's just been terrible. It's a couple days in now, so I'm more together. I can still talk, but, dude. I'm still breaking down left and right, quite frankly. But this does serve as a distraction for me. So thank you guys for all being here and listening. I'm going to upload this to YouTube. We can listen back to it later. 
all the locations we're watching. Several of them have been hit now. I just named them off for you, but I'll name them again. Haiti, we warned Haiti, Dominican Republic, up to 5.9, 5.5 struck. We warned over here at the Adriatic Sea, central to north Italy for a 5.9 and a 5.3 struck, plus small outbreak of 4.8, 4.9. We warned Romania for a 5.9 and a 5.6 hit. We warned the Bulgaria, Greece, I'm sorry, Albania, Greece, Montenegro border here for a 5.9 and a 4.9 struck. We warned Hawaii for a new 5 and a 4.7 struck. We warned for the same sized earthquakes to stretch over to the coast of Mexico. I, I wouldn't even really consider this a big deal, but warned over here at the Gulf of California for the same size that strikes at Hawaii, I was looking for a 5 there. It, I mean, it, we got it within a half magnitude. 4.5, 4.1, and 4.1. Add it together equals 4.7. Same as in Hawaii. We were also looking for mid-range 4s. I was looking for 4.5 to 4.9 to go across the plate over to Texas and looking for a 4.9 in Southern California. So far, Southern California is the miss. Whereas... And this one, I don't know. It started at a five, guys. What can I say? I started. I, I warned. I warned Texas for a four point nine, a, a five hit. They took it down to four point three. It's still within the magnitude, but it's getting weird on on the downgrade part. I mean, I'm not going to dog them. They have their reasons, their calculations. I need to learn how to calculate my own magnitudes. I was never good at math. Maybe there's a computer AI program we could use. Oh wait, that's what they're using. Oh. Okay. All right, guys. You guys be safe. It is 5.18 a.m. Let me remind everybody who can hear this. You need to have an emergency kit, and you need to know what to do when an earthquake hits. I would say the emergency kit is more important than the earthquake plan. Most people aren't going to need to have the earthquake plan just because of your location. You might be up in Canada somewhere where you're on the edge of the crate, not on the edge of the crate on or someplace where you don't normally get earthquake activity, you're watching it flow around the rest of the planet. Okay, but you probably will need your emergency kit at some point for either severe weather, for a fire, for an evacuation, all sorts of, even for a power outage, that it comes in handy. Okay, so change of clothes, set of shoes, flashlight, batteries, food, and water. Those are the basics. Medicines, if you require them, also extras of certain things and you'll think of a lot more stuff to put in than i'm telling you but with the change of clothes set of shoes food and water and batteries for some kind of flashlight so you don't have to use your phone those things will come in tremendously handy especially if you're caught without power or worse and then it's on you with the other stuff uh now uh, one other thing i'd like to remind everybody don't be scared you need to be prepared, and being prepared means like the kit, but with the earthquake plan, I would say just look around your house and figure out where you would go if you sleep. And if you're asleep, look around your bedroom. Do you have things in your bedroom that could fall on you while you're sleeping? What about that could fall in front of a door and block you from getting out? You know, a dresser or a cabinet or something. You've got to look at that stuff ahead of time. And make sure that it's moved out of the way so you don't want it to fall over in front of a door. You're stuck in your freaking room while a big earthquake's happening. Just think about it. Broken things across the floor. Well, do you have a set of shoes by the side of your bed? Sometimes those little things can make a big difference. Anyway, I'm not trying to be all harpy, but I remind people in every update. Because I know there's always going to be some new people listening. And then some people who finally do it after 10 years of me telling them. They're finally going to be like, some troll. Some troll's going to do it. It'd be like, fine, Dutch. Fine, but you know what? Stop clocks right twice a day, Dutch. I'll do it. Just, you know, you might be right on that. All right, dude. Do You do you. Just make sure you got a plan so we can so you can live so we can argue more, troll. <laughs> Whoever you are. Whatever you are. All right. No, I don't even know who I'm talking to now. Some amorphous non-existent troll all right we're out of here guys it's it's been a it's been a wonderful week so far with you guys well, everything else has sucked but my viewers have really made it uh better thank you just thank you for being kind and thank you for being loving 
and understanding for me missing my interview and everything else. So thank you guys. Much love. Peace out.